I'm back with a new Minecraft adventure, which I call the Minecraft Mobile. I'm sure many of you have been in a situation where, let's say your parents are asking for their phone or something else, and because you're the closest. But what if you? But maybe you're too lazy and you just don't want to do it. Because of that, I created this, the Minecraft Mobile. Basically, you can put, you can put any with the object one. For example, the phone. You can put it in this tray, and then you can remote control it to uh, deliver it to your parents. The structure is pretty simple. Uh, back here we have our two motors which are connecting the wheels. So I use two motors, as you can see here, two motors, because I thought it would look better than one motor. And you can do this with one motor, but I thought it looked better than two. So as you can see, each motor is moving its own wheel. And this, of course, is the tray, which will um, hold the load, or the phone, remote, anything you want. Then we have the third motor here, which is used to move the front part of the vehicle. So if you wanted to move left, you can just turn the motor and it'll go that side, same thing in all the other directions. Then last we have our fourth motor, which just moves the front set of wheels. The hub here displays a smiley face, which I, which I put because I thought it was cool. Then uh, I'm sure many have realized it looks like a truck. Uh, that's the whole point I wanted to make this for. I, I thought it looked cool because I thought it looked cool because a truck, a truck usually carries heavy loads. Like for example, there's cargo trucks, there's dump trucks. They all carry a heavy load. So I wanted to resemble that. Like for example, this phone is a heavy load. So we go and uh, deliver it to my parents. Now let's see if my mind from mobile can deliver this Xbox remote to another room which my sister is in. So here's the code. So the code is fairly simple. First off, we have uh, when program starts, set the D motor to 50%. The D motor is the front wheels, as you can see here. Then set movement motors to 50%. My movement motors are given here, A and E. The A motor and the E motor. Then forever, I have to display this smiley face, which I created. So the way, so the reason why it's slanted is because I've also made the hub a bit slanted so it can display properly. As you can see, if I turn it on, it's perfectly displaying. So you can find this turn on uh, protection here. You can turn that, you can find that in the light section. As you can see, turn on and you can make it whatever you want. So as I said, this is remote controlled. So you have to, of course, add a remote to control it with. So the way you can add a remote control is you see this controller, game controller button. If you click it, you will have an empty blank, but I already have this joystick. So the way you can get the joystick is you can click this unlock button. And you will see all these things. This is the button section. So you controllers, sliders, buttons, etc. So this is the joystick. It is in the first option controllers. I it's the, called the joystick. So the way you insert it is you hold you hold it, place it whatever you want. So as I because I already have this, I'm just gonna delete this one. You can also change the colors here. You can change the name of the button. So right now I'm just gonna delete it. So yeah. So once you put the controller. Then you should scroll all the way down and you should, you should find a remote control section. As you can see here, this block when J2, which is my joystick, is up, X axis, etc. So when I put right here is when, joy, when J2 down. Down isn't one of these. So when J2 is down, like when it is in this position, I wanted to move it backwards. So what I did was, I move the C motor to position zero, so you can perfectly move backwards. I also made the D motors move backwards. I made the A and E motors also move backwards. I did the same thing, I did the same essential thing, but vice versa, because I wanted to go forward. 
up. Up is you move the joystick all the way up. Then, then as you can see here, when J2 is left. So when J2 is left, I mean that it's here or here. So when J2 is left, I want the C position to go to 30. So 30, so 30, the 30 position is roughly somewhere here. But I also set a boundary, set a boundary so it doesn't move too far left. So what I did was, if the C position is greater than 30, like the C, like this, this is 30, the C position goes here. If the C position goes over, like here, it's 61. It shouldn't be able to do that. If that happens, it should stop the motor. It should revert back to the zero position. That's the exact same thing as going on with the right motor, but I just set it to 330, so it's a different boundary for the right side. Then once the, if the joystick, let's say if you're moving it around, but it's released, then it goes, when it's released, I have to stop moving everything. I have to stop the D motor. I have to stop the C motor. I have to stop all motors. The reason why I put it stop moving is because is because here I put my A and E motors, so those will automatically stop moving. And I put the D and C motors because they're not classified in my A and E.